Back in the winter of 2001, my youngest son and I were on our way from Boise, Idaho to Medford, Oregon. We had taken a car trailer to his old place in Boise in order to haul his non-running Jeep to his new place in Medford. We hit an area of heavy snow in the southern Cascades around 2 a.m. It took 45 minutes or so to get down the mountain. We had, of course, been drinking coffee to stay alert. About 25 miles west of the pass, it became obvious that the last few quarts of coffee had to be drained. We stopped at a wide spot in the road near a summer tourist lookout deserted in winter. There is a gas station and an ice cream joint on the west side of the road, closed this time of year, and no town or settlement within 30 miles. This is tall, timber country and unsettled. Across the road is a small parking area from the ice cream joint. It is paved and about 200 feet wide and 80 feet deep. I pulled in as I stepped out with my 45 on hip. It occurred to me in a flash that grabbing the 590 Moisey would be a good idea. As we walked to the far end of the area to be well off the road, the hair on my arms and the back of my neck stood on end. The area directly to our front was open with a depth of 50 yards and a width of 100 yards. The night was clear and cold, 8 to 10 inches of snow on the ground, and with the moon almost full, we could see quite well. While standing and taking a leak with my son about 15 feet to my right, I saw as if springing from the earth in front of us across the open area, 10 or 12 creatures moving rapidly back and forth in sort of a weave pattern. These things, not human men, were close to 7 feet tall, thin, bipedal with long arms, meaty length gray fur and were damn fast on their feet. I brought the shotgun up and slid the safety off as my son was drawing his 45. I don't know if I can adequately explain the overwhelming feeling of menace but here it goes. I had been operating on pure instinct since I had stepped from the pickup. The rotten feeling hit me split second before the things arrived. The feeling instinct was that we were prey and subject to a very bad death to be slaughtered and eaten. Not a logical process, gut feeling and massively overwhelming. As these things started moving about in front of us, more appeared and mixed among them, all the while running about fast in front of us. My son and I were backing toward the truck. I would not present my back to them, and some of them peeled off to the right and left in an encirclement movement. They were rolling in fast from the sides now. I could smell and feel their presence. We got to the truck loaded on adrenaline and ready to kill as we both knew we were in grave danger. We piled into the truck, locked the doors. I had the keys out and ready as my butt neared the seat. I had the engine lit and transient gear and gas pedal smashed in one motion. Adrenaline is great stuff. As we fled, yes, fled, something very close by let out a vocal scream of rage and pain. I believe one or more of the group had gotten really close to us in their pursuit and I ran over the foot of one of them. Yeah, they were that close. We rolled onto the highway and I told my son to wash the bed of the pickup as well as the trailer. He already was indexed to the rear with the shotgun. We hauled ass for at least 20 miles before the feeling of grave danger started to dissipate. The feeling that nailed both of us as we discussed soon after was one of being prey and soon to be slaughtered and eaten. I'm not easily led and neither believe or disbelieve all the Bigfoot, ghost, and werewolf stuff. In fact, I am skeptical. My son was speaking with a co-worker about six months later who had grown in Prospect, Oregon, about 30 miles south of Union Creek where the incident took place. He asked Jake if he had ever heard of any strange ongoings in the area. Jake went ashy white and pretty much retold the above tale. He says to avoid the place at night. A family friend, a 25-year-old retired cop not given to flights of fancy and an excellent observer, had a tale very similar from a year before. I told my wife of this event, and of course she looked at me at the beginning as though I had developed a third eyeball in the center of my forehead. That was from my shock. She did believe me, but did not wish to hear any more details. She said the tale gave her chills. Me too as I write this, the hair on my back of my neck and forearms are sticking up. I have not gone back to explore and would not without a large group of men armed with shotguns and flamethrowers. It was summer 1986. My childhood had a great group of very normal everyday kids and we played war a lot with each other. Normally about six of us played through the day with kids rotating back from chores. This particular Saturday, we decided to play war behind the Alto Elementary School in the woods and creek area. Anyways, I was trying to get into the woods ahead of the other kids before they shut up to have the advantage. 
We were using squirt guns and water balloons. It was like 10 a.m. As soon as I ran to the woods, which I knew very well, this was my stomping grounds, literally, I felt uneasy, like I was being watched, not by a friend either. This feeling lingered and got stronger and stronger, like whatever was watching me was moving closer. In this small stretch of woods, there was a creek behind me that ran the stretch of the woods. There's also a train, trestle, railroad tracks as well. I was crouched in the tall grass facing the playground and the road when I heard a splash and a very fast movement going behind me. I jumped because I was startled at the height and suddenness of the shadow flashing behind me. When I whipped around, I saw a large black gray wolf-like creature that was running down the creek bed bank alongside the creek behind me. It was shifting from four to two legs and jumped after about three seconds into the brush away from me into the trees. It seemed to have disappeared and I didn't hear it anymore. I was a country woodsy kid. I had no comprehension other than fear for what I saw at the moment. I ran home which wasn't far, about maybe a quarter mile. I didn't tell anybody about what I saw. I was afraid of being teased or made fun of about it by other people. When I ran in my house and got into the bedroom, it had only been like a few minutes but I remember thinking it resembled the werewolves in the Howling movie. It was, I'd guess, 7 to 8 feet tall and very muscular, maybe 300 pounds. Its head resembled a timber wolf with long canines, long clawed hands, its legs bent backwards like a canine. It glanced back at me. It didn't want me to see it. It didn't smell at all. Its face was not feral or ferocious. Its eyes were blue. Its presence was powerful, overwhelming. I didn't go out of my own yard for several days, which my neighborhood friends thought was odd. I had childhood asthma though, so they assumed that was my issue when they didn't see me much. I used that excuse when my family wondered why I was so homebound. I never told a soul what I saw for fear of not being believed. I stayed close to my friends when we played, but I didn't go close to that creek stretch of woods for three to four years, and never alone. Over the next few years, I rationalized to myself that I didn't know what I really was seeing. The wolf-like creature image in my memory was better left forgotten. Fast forward, it's winter 2009. It's a blizzard of snow outside. All of my family was sound asleep. About 1 a.m. we wake up to a large thud sound on the roof of our home, like the weight of a person moving around on the roof of our one-story home. There's a lot of scraping noises and a slow, deliberate walking sound. This goes on for about a minute. My girlfriend, our children, and myself are genuinely spooked by this phenomenon happening on the roof. I recall vividly that all of us were utterly silent, huddled in the hallway looking intently at each other and up at the ceiling from all the loud creaking and scraping sounds. I don't own guns, but I certainly felt it was a good idea to grab my machete that was in the closet. That was when I realized the dread feeling in my gut was the exact same feeling I had years ago with the wolf-like creature from my youth. As I struggled with the realization, I quietly as possible crept up to the back slider door, machete in hand. I had genuine fear for my girlfriend and children, but kept it to myself. They were still huddled and scared, watching me sneak outside. Please know that I'm rather a fearless man for the most part. I ever so quietly snuck outside. It's snowing hard, big flakes outside, and it's eerily quiet. I'm crouched in my pajamas alongside the back of the house. I'm holding my breath, looking up at the roof, listening. Slowly, the clawed hands and timber wolf face with piercing blue eyes peers over the roof down at me. It's the same exact creature I saw in my youth. We stare at each other blankly for a few seconds. There definitely is a weird sense of recognition between the creature and me in those moments. I was physically frozen and shocked because the creature was only a good 8 feet or so from me on the roof of my home. It suddenly leaps off the roof and about 30 feet into our backyard. It lands on all fours and runs on two legs back in the tree line in what seems like a blur. It stands there at the tree line looking at me. The contrast of the snow and its size and fur make it easy to spot. I stood still while the wolf-like creature and myself stared at each other. We stared at each other for what I'm guessing a minute. In that minute, my adrenaline dumped. My fear of this creature turned to anger for disrupting my life and my family. I made a decision as my anger grew, a reckless one. I yelled a loud angry noise and charged, machete in hand directly at it. Pathetically, it took me like 15 seconds to run the distance the creature had in like two moments. 
The wolf-like creature didn't budge, move, or anything. It just stood there watching me run at it. It appeared mildly amused, its facial expression almost a smirk. As I got within about 30 feet, in my head loudly I heard an audible, Don't. It's a deep, loud voice. I swear the sheer volume of the voice stopped me dead in my run at the creature. I was instantly physically calm, confused, still afraid of the creature. My fear of it was different. Its presence was still overwhelming me. At this moment I realized this creature is intelligent. I dropped the machete in a physical plea, a gesture to not be harmed. I backed away in slow, deliberate steps backwards still facing it. If it chose to be violent, it could easily kill or harm me. After a few seconds, it turned and walked calmly about 30 feet into the woods. Its presence faded and it felt like it wasn't ever there. I went back to my residence looking over my shoulder the whole time. I was so bewildered. It was a very vivid, surreal feeling. My reality had been spun like a top. I go back inside, but I keep looking over the slider towards the woods. I announce, it's gone, girls. My girlfriend, her daughter, and my daughter walk into the dining room area from the hallway asking questions in quiet voices. I hug our daughters, telling them it's late. It was just an animal that ran off. They reluctantly buy it. My girlfriend and I whisper about what happened earlier. It comes out that she saw it a month or so before, which then clicked to me. She had called me while I was running errands early one evening. She sounded upset and scared. I was at a store only a mile from our residence. I was home in like three minutes. When I got into the house, she said she lied and chalked it off to the neighbor's big Rottweiler. That was when I admitted my knowledge of the creature. Our daughter slept, but we really didn't. How could we?